religious power so strong that it would always, you know, um, kind of surpass whatever efforts would be. Yes. And you answered yourself with the yes. last question. <laughs> yeah. Uganda is a very religious country. Yeah. And uh, religion and state have refused to, to separate the power, which is, of course, difficult. But practical solutions would be for, like, what they mean, as I said, the issue of, of, of the gay issue is a hot cake in, in Uganda. You want to sell your chicken and no one is reading your advert. Write your advert properly and put the heading, gay man eats crocodile, your advert will be read. Because everyone will run and buy that newspaper because there's something to do with gay, you know. So what you're going to do, what, this is something that, we, because the media, as I said, is censored. When we have mainstream organizations that I talked about, when we want to, to put an advert in the newspapers, you have to be sure you're ready to pay three times three times if it's going to be about anti, I mean, LGBT issues. Because as I told you about these 45 organizations, they're under a coalition. So the coalition to be able to send out a statement that has to be three times the money, the initial money. So it's difficult, but what we realize that since the gay issue sells a lot, we're also going to use the same strategy, the tabloid that outed us used, the same strategy. Tell our stories, get our message, also us come up with a pu publication and put it on the streets of Uganda. Mm -hmm. The way they put it there in one boat, because we have people who are willing to share their stories, people whose, whose faces they are willing to show, we are also going to do the same thing. So that, that's the fundraising drive we are on to see how we can get funds to publish and we also put it on the streets. You go pretend to be buying something in the supermarket to leave a branch there. You go where they sell newspapers, you also leave it there. Because that's the only way now we can be really able to take out our message. Because everything else, even these campaigns we do in the middle of the night where we go and uh, whatever we put, the next morning on radio, they're like, oh, homosexuals are back at recruiting. They are going door by door and all this. Mm -hmm. Which is okay, that means you got our message. That means you read it. But because they tell them that homosexuals are recruiting and they are giving a lot of money, people even call us. How much are you paying? I want to join. Mm -hmm. Because there is that, there is that, um, that myth that homosexuals have money, mm -hmm. and they are given money by the West to recruit. So if, if the issue of your prime minister was in Uganda when she was being elected, it was all over the news, mm -hmm. and after it was brushed off, they said they should stop showing it because this is not a good example for the generation. Mm. We've mm. seen we've seen where President Obama, uh, the first president of the United States, talk about uh, LGBT issues in inauguration speech, mm. you know, and there, there are protests in Uganda about Obama, we love you, but we don't like your homo mm. agenda and all this. So they know what is happening around the world. That's why they are saying that they they they, are, they have the power to decide what is good for their culture. Who are you to tell us what to do? Why is it that, um, why is it that um, you're not telling us to stop polygamy since you don't do polygamy in your countries? You know, they start bringing out all these issues. Why is it that none of you is talking about polygamy? Why are you telling us homosexuality? So they start bringing all these kinds of things. It's, it's a very tricky situation with the issue of the Western Africa. And, and I want to just remind you that in, in general, Africans never used to talk about sex in public, in general. And then there you come and start talking about a minority sexuality. Then, it, then the issue comes out, oh, they've learned from the West. That's mm. why they're talking about it. Because mm. or if, if the majority sexuality was never this talked about in public, how who are you to come and start talking about same sex orientation? Mm. So that's when the issue of um, importation comes in, it's an African, then the issue of religion is money. They, they, they failed their agenda in the United States because they are very powerful other pro-gay pro organizations in the United States. So why not go to a religious country that is very poor and invest in them to drive your agenda? Okay, so are we having one here in the front? Yeah, um, I was wondering, how do you manage to organize yourself as an organization in face of all these limitations that you face? Um, was trying to get your message across. How do you manage to keep in contact and meet up? And how does yes. that work? Which problems do you um, come in contact with? Actually, it's, it's, it's not hard to get people together. 
With, uh, one knows another one, another one knows another one, then we have the text messages, we just said there's a party and everyone will turn up. Then we have uh, private uh, social media uh, uh, communications that we do. And then we have websites where people write to us. And because, we, uh, as I told you, this reflex we put around the country and all these people call us actually, who are like, I've been looking for you, I've seen you on TV, I've had you before, how, how can I get in touch with you? Uh, we organized Pride last year, and people were like, Kasha, you're crazy, how can you organize Pride? <laughs> <laughs> actually, one wrote, there's a blogger who is a gay person, who, who is actually a critic, he's a gay critic of a gay movement, and actually said, you must be nuts, you know, to think of organizing Pride in the, um, in the middle of all this that is happening. And I just commented and I said, I guess I'm really just nuts. And <laughs> yes, because, um, because I felt that there would never be a right time. There will never be a right time. And we said as a committee that even if it means only the committee marching. Mm -hmm. In South Africa, they started with 15. Today they have pride in every, every province of South Africa. So I organized pride. And last Friday, there was the first, of course, we were arrested yes, during pride day party. <laughs> we <were> arrested. <laughs> yes. But last Friday, yes, last, no, last Friday, but one. 110 people turned up for the first Pride fundraising party for this year. Yet last year when I put it out on the Facebook, everyone was like, this is not the right time. People got scared. But the first Pride in Uganda had only than 50 people. You won't believe. And after the Pride, everyone was asking, when is the next Pride? Is it next weekend? Because <laughs> 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 it's a new thing. Very uh, many Uganders don't uh, understand it in the community. So people kept writing on the page. Is it next month? Is it, I told them, please read the notes we put on, on, the, on the page so that you familiarize yourself why it's Pride, why it's called Pride. And now this year, everyone is so excited when the first fundraising party two weeks ago, 110 people bought tickets. And I was like, wow, because I was not there, I missed. But just seeing the photos, I was like, this is going to be bigger and better. And yet people knew what happened last year. They knew about the arrests, but they, they are willing to go because People get angry. Some have, have, have gotten so scared that they've left the community because of fear. It, it, it's really depressing to be in that state of anxiety all the time, not knowing is it going to pass. Then the issue is number one, and everyone panics in the community. Then tomorrow it's number two. Then it goes back. To, you know, it's like that. So people are like, actually, right now we are all saying in the community, if you're going to pass the bill, just pass it and then move on to the next plan because we are fed up of the tension. And, and at the same time, you're like, okay, already there is a lot of trouble, a lot of danger happening even before the bill is passed. What if the bill is passed? Well, it will even get worse because people have actually threatened us face to face and said, you, we are waiting for the bill to justify their actions. You know? So it's a state of anxiety that is going on. And some people are like, I just can't take it anymore. My best friend is now, he's now in, in, in Oslo. He left. He's like, Kasha, I just can't take it anymore. You know, people are like tired. And imagine, you could afford to do that. But we have people who cannot even afford a meal a day. How would they afford to even live to go to a safe place? And then they, there comes the issue when they go to these countries, the countries who are condemning our government, these are countries who are having protests on the streets. But then when our people go there for, for asylum, they are subjected to all this humiliation, you know? Prove you're gay. How does someone prove they're gay? <laughs> you know? Because I've had meetings with, with the immigration board of the EU telling them something needs to be done. Your good, your good in human rights policies, your constitutions, non discrimination, and all this, but when it comes to issues of immigration, you have the worst record. Sweden, Norway, these are countries we even have corporations together as a movement, as a gay movement. These are people who are investing a lot of capacity building for our movement. But these are the people, actually, who are subjecting our own people to this humiliation. Hmm? So it becomes, you wonder, they're giving us with one hand and taking away with the other. So it, it, it frustrates even the community at home when they hear that A went to this country, and this country is actually the, the workshop we, we attended last week is sponsored by this country, and then they hear, and again, this country is the one sending them back. 
and then they expose the same people they are refusing to, to give asylum in the newspapers. And they want to send them back home. You've already exposed them in the media. And now you want to send them home. Just like the UK issue that happened uh, last month. They exposed this lesbian in the newspapers. They deported her after exposing her. Two weeks after arriving in the country, she was killed. What country was that? That's the, United, the United Kingdom. Because they exposed, it, exposed them in the newspapers. Some of story is already dangerous for me to go back home. Then you go ahead to expose them in the newspapers. What do you expect when they are home? Did, did but protest in the United States? No, there's a, a big protest and actually there's an organization that is holding is holding the migration board accountable and I, I think they've called even for the resignation of someone. Because it's unacceptable. If if you're still investigating, don't expose people in the newspapers, they've told you already they're in danger. Yet at the same time, you're exposing them. The reason actually why most of them run and even change names is because of fear of what they, they went through at home and even knowing. So it's a, it's a big challenge, but we have to just work step by step. We can't again sit down and feel sorry for ourselves because if we start feeling sorry for ourselves, who is ever going to make the situation better for us? It's not easy. I mean, like me, I don't stay home because I'm brave. I just stay home because I feel like I can still protect myself. I feel that I can still handle the heat. Who knows, maybe tomorrow when I go back, I don't handle the heat. So it's not like people who live um, are the cowards. Yeah. Do people try to learn some um, martial art to defend sorry. themselves or something like that? The gay community? Well, there's, there's, there hasn't been any programmed or organized, mm -hmm. um, but some people have done it on their own. So we, we have a couple more questions. Uh, and I know we're running really late on time, and, and thank you again. I know we have a, a very stringent uh, 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 agenda forward for the, for, the, for the next two days. He's going to be in a, in a lot of media here in Iceland. And, uh, on the Tuesday, we have a uh, uh, movie showing in Bio Paradise. I'd like to invite you all to, to uh, come there and, and uh, see the movie. and, and uh, the uh, Kasha will be taking questions afterwards. And then on Wednesday in the, in the noon, we actually have a, a lecture by Kasha at the University of Iceland. And all these uh, um, are uh, being advertised on our homepage. So you could go there and, and see more information. But just uh, finishing with, it, with a couple of uh, questions, I'm just going to take them together. So if we had Hank, Helga and then Angela. Yeah, that's no? Yeah. Okay, so Helga, you got the last question. Yes, thank you very much. It's very, very informative and I admire your courage and, and I understand it's really complicated in many ways. And in one way, Iceland maybe is the same as Uganda because we in Iceland are a small country and we don't like other people from other countries telling us what to do. So it's difficult to help us. Mm -hmm. And maybe in, in one way you're the same. You're Governance doesn't want others to come. And you are working in different fields, I hear, with public and with the politicians and trying to, yeah, well, it's a struggle. But one question, do you see anything you could get gain from us in amnesty? Is there anything we could possibly do? Yes, uh, I'm definitely hoping for solidarity with the people of Iceland. Mm -hmm. uh, this solidarity can be in support of financial support uh, because we don't get any funding for our projects from the government. And uh, even us to be able to compete for proposals internationally, mm -hmm. it's a challenge because we're not a registered organization. Mm -hmm. So most of we rely on donations from you know, partners, friends have dinners and collect some money, do activities and they send us. And, but I'm also expecting some technical support. Technical support could be someone volunteering to, to, to help, help us with a website, you know, someone, someone to get in touch with our communications and teach them how to write, um, how to write maybe a, um, a newsletter, you know, that kind of technical support, volunteering, even when people are in the country for a two weeks holiday. Take one hour off to just come and visit us, you know, to, to show that you, you're standing with us. It helps a lot. While at the office you can say, oh, maybe this you do here. I'm good at this. I can help. That kind of support. Technical support of equipment. 
equipment that we can be able to use in our own organizations to be able to to, to carry out our projects. We need that a lot. And we, of course, it's a challenge to have them and our offices.